Really quick, important announcement. As this video comes out, I am actually live on Twitch right now, raising some money for the American Cancer Society. I am doing a charity stream. If you guys could stop by, it would mean a whole lot. Even if you can't donate, just come and show some support. I would greatly appreciate it. Hit that link in the description or in the pinned comment, and hopefully I'll see you guys there. What is going on guys? Welcome back to another Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl Wi-Fi battle. Today I have probably the most unconventional weird ass battle I've had in a pretty long time. And you know that's saying something considering the teams that I use. But uh, I've got everybody's favorite rain team back in the mix ready to ready to get some hot wet action. And uh, <laughs> my opponent here is working with you know a pretty interesting team. There's threats like the Dragonite, the Milotic is particularly annoying to my team. Uh, Togekiss is always annoying, so uh, trying to formulate a plan, but as you're gonna see, things get just a little bit goofy. Let's just run right into the battle. So, from the team preview, I honestly have no idea what they're gonna want to lead off with, so I decided to just lead off with my Persian. I can get some fake out support and potentially uh, a little pivot going, as they end up leading off with the healthy evolution, the, <laughs> the Leafy on here. Uh, which is interesting. I'm just going to go right for a fake out here and get some pretty good chip damage uh, as also the U-turn is looking pretty nice. So um, honestly don't know what this thing wants to do to me really. Leaf Blade will definitely hurt, um, but it's really not too big of a deal. So I'm kind of expecting either set up like Swords Dance or something like that or just for them to go right for some damage. So I get the U-turn off paired with the fake out. Knock a, knock a big old chunk off that piece of kale. And now I can bring right in the absolute legendary horse, the Rapidash. Now I am actually Choice Scarf, uh, so I know I can outspeed a lot of stuff on their team, and it's actually looking pretty great for me in this matchup, but especially against this Leafeon. So, to my surprise, they actually end up going for a sunny day. So Rapidash comes in and is able to just soak up some rays. 10 out of 10. Did not expect to, you know, be enjoying Sunny Day on like against my rain team. So uh, I'm actually going to take advantage of the sun boosted flare blitz here. Just uh, just absolutely enjoying a nice day out here, Rapidash. So I go for the flare blitz. Uh, they decide to bring in the Milotic, who in the sun is going to take nearly half from that, and that is some pretty solid chunk. I know that you know Milotic is obviously a huge wall to my team, so I'm honestly just excited to be able to get as much damage off on this thing as possible. And uh, I still think it's hilarious that now I never expected to have to be able to see Rapidash in Sun on the team that I'm using. So I'm honestly just going to take advantage of that. I'm thinking to myself, you know what, that, that might have been minimum damage. I can go for another Flare Blitz and potentially knock out this, uh, this sexy snake. So I go for the Flare Blitz there. I actually do end up knocking it out. Uh, it was a critical hit, but unless they clicked Recover there, uh, they would have actually died to... Uh, the burn damage next turn, plus I would have been able to live in a, a Scald in the Sun, so... Really great to get, take care of the Milotic, and 10 out of 10 still did not expect, like, no way in my mind I was imagining Rapidash able to take care of that thing. Now, uh, they actually end up bringing in the Espeon here, and they don't know that I'm Choice Scarf, so I'm just gonna take advantage of that Sun once more and go for another Flare Blitz, and that takes out the Espeon, which is hilarious. So, obviously, Espeon ordinarily outspeeds and probably knocks me out, uh, but I'm Scarf, and I'm able to catch that thing uh, off guard, so... <laughs> Pegasus is out here doing the most, and you just absolutely love to see it, even without uh, Wild Charge. BDSP really robbed my dude of Wild Charge in this generation. For some reason, Rapidash doesn't get that move, and it really grinds my gears, but still just making things happen without it. Uh, anyway, in comes a Dragonite. Now this derpy little bastard is quite the threat to my team because of Dragon Dance, and that's exactly what they're gonna do. They know what the deal is, and uh, they're just going to start giving me a nice little free dance show. Um, but I will not be paying for that. I will be paying for that in death, hopefully. Um, so I decide to go for the Ice Beam here, as it actually just ends up going right for the Outrage. Now after plus one, that's definitely taking care of Bubblegum. And that is quite a sad day, both because he's fucking adorable and because now I kind of lose my... Uh, my drizzle support, but the bigger issue at hand is now how the hell am I supposed to deal uh, with the Dragonite? My team, I, I can outspeed it um, with one of my Swift Swimmers, but with its multi-scale still intact, I'm not going to be able to knock it out. So I decide to go into Persian here, and I go for the fake out. Now immediately, immediately after clicking the fake out, I realize that I fucked up because now that actually knocks him out of his outrage, and that allows it to now, to now set up another Dragon Dance. Uh, which does actually set it up to be faster than the entirety of my team. So I've got myself in a little bit of a pickle here. I go for the play rough, you know, which is super effective, but 
you know, I'm like a Persian, so it's not gonna be able to do a whole lot, and that thing's bulky as shit. So, now I've got myself in even a worse situation than I was before. I definitely should have just gone right into Specs Love Disc, Lo Love Disc and gone for uh, the Ice Beam and really just gave it to him, but uh, now I've got myself, I gotta, I gotta dig myself out of this hole. So, here's the plan, and pretty much the only way that I can get myself out of this situation is going into Rapidash. I've kind of done what I needed to do with this thing. It would be nice to keep around, but if anybody needs to be sacked, uh, I suppose Rapidash isn't too bad of an option here. I go into this thing just so that it can die, uh, and then I can bring in a free switch. So, Earthquake does take me out, Majestic Ass Horse. Uh, is dead, but honestly did way better than I imagined in this rain team, so we'd love to see it. So now I can go back into my putty. This is uh, this is Mike Tyson's cat, if you guys didn't realize, but uh, my plan is to essentially just try to whittle this thing down with fake outs now, because I have nothing that can outspeed it, and that's really the only thing I can do is just take advantage of my priority. So I go for the fake out there. Uh, it doesn't quite knock it out, of course, but now I have quite a sad decision to make, and that decision is basically who comes into a plus two Dragonite. And no one really enjoys that, honestly, in like the entire game, but I guess I'll try out Gadnik Breaker of Worlds. Unfortunately, he's not going to be breaking any worlds today, as that Earthquake is going to just absolutely obliterate me. So, <laughs> Love Disc, not going to quite be able to get the sweep that he once did before. Shout out to the previous video, if you haven't checked that out, you should definitely go watch it. But, now this sets me up finally to where I can bring back in the Persian, and I can, <laughs> I can kill this thing with another fake out. So... You know, sometimes I guess you gotta do what you gotta do. Sometimes you gotta allocate like damn near half your team to take care of a dragon. Uh, especially when you're using weird shit like this. So, uh, I am able to take care of the Dragonite, which is amazing. Because now I don't have to worry about being swept by that thing. And we might have ourselves a match here, boys. So, in comes Gabagool. And whenever you see a muck, I'm honest, I'm always immediately kind of thinking curse. Uh, just because that's obviously the muck that I tend to use. So I go for a rain dance here because obviously I need to get that up. Uh, and the sweep is still potentially there in the back pocket. I've got a couple of uh, swift swimmers, and they're just itching to get some, some, some moistness out here. So, the muck ends up actually going for an acid armor, which is not something you really expect to see uh, in competitive matches, but, you know, that's actually horrible for me, because I actually am only left with physical attackers. So, I thought I was done dealing with the Dragonite and was going to be uh, easy swimming from here on out, but, you know, it's actually looking pretty, t <laughs> pretty tough. So I go for the U-turn here. Now, I have a couple of options. Either I go into Armaldo and potentially start setting up, or I go into Sea King and do the same. I'm thinking Armaldo probably has a little bit better of a matchup here. Uh, so I do bring this thing in as they actually reveal Poison Gas. So that's gonna give me a poison, um, which is an interesting move choice. This uh, this turns out to be quite the, quite the strange Muck, but honestly, Muck is always such a big pile of shit to deal with that it's it's always annoying. But uh, my plan is essentially to kind of swords dance here so I can offset those defense boosts. I could potentially get a knockoff so it doesn't have reliable support with that black sludge. And I guess just kind of inch my way to victory here with this damn muck. But now I end up seeing Venom Drench and I'm thinking, homie, what the fuck is this muck? I have no idea what's going on here. Now my attack drops and my speed. Um, I'm a swift swimmer with a speed drop, but obviously I'm still gonna be faster for like a good couple more speed drops But I mean as long as the rain is up um, But the poison is annoying. Luckily, it's not uh, a bad poison, which is nice And now I'm like, you know what muck just just, just fuck just knock it off, man I, I just give him a nice little knockoff not able to do a whole bunch of damage there because we're actually sitting at zero here in terms of uh, I've got plus two attack, they're rocking plus two defense as they end up going for another venom drench They're just really just really not wanting the Armaldo sweep to happen, which, you know, I get it. You, you, you take a look at these abs and you're thinking, this is the kind of guy you want to just stop in their tracks, even though it's actually a girl. But, <laughs> quite the interesting uh, setup here is now, I'm like, I don't even know what to do. I'm just going to go for a rock slide, screw it, and just try to get some damage here. Uh, I know that their last move slot has to be an attacking move, but they end up going for another acid armor, and this has got to be the most erect muck anybody has ever seen. This thing is hard as a rock out here, and I'm just honestly pretty frightened at this point. I really wish, uh, right about now that I saved my love disc, to be honest, having a nice little uh, hydro pump in the rain looks pretty solid against a half health muck that's got, you know, plus four defense. But, you know, I don't have the love disc, and I've, I've gotta just gotta move on here. I'm gonna go for another rock slide, and I miss, which is yeah, annoying. But then they gunk shot, and then they miss. So I'm like, what even is this battle? I have. Truly no idea what's going on right now, but it's, <laughs> I am able to at least see 
uh, that their only attacking move is going to be Gunk Shot, which, you know, is a scary move, but you see uh, they, they face the, uh, the repercussions there with the lower accuracy. So I go for another Rock Slide. I'm thinking maybe I can get some flinches and just whittle this thing down. But, you know, RNGesus does not giveth today as... To my surprise, they end up Venom Drenching again. And I'm like, why, why even, you should probably just try to kill me. I don't know, like, Arma I honestly just want Armaldo dead so that I could potentially tra start setting something else up. But, you know, he, he has other plans, I guess. Mux over here just pretty much doing his own thing. I like to imagine that there's actually not another person at the end of this uh, Nintendo Switch that I'm playing against. It's kind of just an NPC. But I go for another Rock Slide here. I do not get the switch, the, the flinch, and he does land a gunk shot here, which is like, finally, just put me out of my misery. But it doesn't even nearly do enough, because Armaldo, about thick as shit, and is not very effective. Um, we basically sat here and done nonsense the whole entirety of my reign, and, uh, you know, that's annoying, but I do still have the Persian in the back. And, honestly, I can see light at the end of the tunnel here. If I can whittle this thing down to the point where Sea King can knock it out, I could potentially get a, get a Sea King sweep to happen... And we all want that to happen, let's be real. Um, so they end up finishing me off with one more gunk shot. Shout out to the days when gunk shot animation was them throwing a trash can at you. Do you guys remember that? That was like the best gunk shot animation by far. But anyway, now shit's about to finally go down. I bring back in the puthy and uh, for like the 10th time today, go for another fake out. And I'm just out here, just out here working out these fake outs, to tell you what. I go for that just to get a little bit of chip, just to ensure... Uh, that Sea King can get the knockout here. So now I just go for the Rain Dance because obviously I do need that up. Um, and actually, Persian at full health should be able to take a Gunk Shot from this thing. That's why I much prefer to use a Curse Muck. I mean, you get the defense regardless. You just don't have any offensive power. Uh, so it's actually kind of really easy to play around a Muck as long as they don't have uh, physical attack boost. So they actually decide to poison me and some Poison Puthy. Is, you want to stay far away from that. Let that be a lesson to y'all. Um, even though I'm not that much of a threat here because my only attacking move is play rough. Um, but that's fine. You know, I get that like negative 8, 10 HP damage. I damn near heal this muck as it ends up missing another gunk shot. So this, this muck must just not be able to see shit with all the water in his eyes. I don't know, but he's just missing gunk shots left and right. Go for another play rough and honestly, it's it's in my best inter interest for Persian to die here so that I can just get in Sea King and I can ensure the longevity of the rain for my, uh, for my fishy. So a <laughs> gunk shot does land and now I die. But I did what I needed to do. You know, I came in, I slapped him around a little bit and uh, got the rain up. Now it's me, my fish, and a fucking dream, boys. You guys know the drill. Fuck yeah, Sea King, the massive legend. Everybody knows the tale of the fuck yeah, Sea King. So um, I'm thinking, you know, I can probably take an attack from this fella. Also, if I've learned anything from this dude's muck set is that they'll probably want to go, uh, you know, do like to get a poison on me or something which isn't even toxic. But I go for the swords dance here. Now, if you ever had any questions about Sea King's name, it's both because, you know, he's the king of the sea, but also it's because he is seeking that ass. And let me tell you, he's gonna, he's gonna eat you because he gets what he seeks. Uh, anyway, they actually end up getting the poison on me, uh, which is perfect because Sea King is not gonna stay alive long enough to really have that poison, you know, be an issue. And now it's finally time. I got that plus two attack. He's still sitting at some pretty massive defense, but uh, in the rain, with that attack boost, Waterfall is able to take care of Muck, and uh, now you're starting to realize what the hell I was talking about in the beginning of this battle. But, finally able to take care of the Muck, praise the lord, I've never been so afraid of a pile of sludge in my life. Uh, but now it's basically my Sea King against their uh, Togekiss, and they have a Leafeon in the back. Now I know what you're thinking, this does not sound good for my dude Sea King, but what you're failing to realize is that I actually carry Poison Jab for fairies, and this Togekiss comes in, probably thinking he's just about to have a walk in the park, albeit a rainy day, a rainy walk in the park, but surprise him with a poison jab. After a Swords Dance, it does take care of it, and watching Sea King kill something as meta as the Togekiss is probably about the most satisfying thing in the world, and you just you just absolutely love rooting for this little guy. Sea King is one of those Pokemon that like has never gotten any love at all, because, you know, it's it, he, he's Sea King. Anyway, last Pokemon is going to be this Leafeon. Of course, they don't have the sun up like they once did, you know, days ago. And I'm able to outspeed in, this, in the rain uh, and get a, a poison jab off to kill the Leafeon. So that is going to conclude the match there. The late game, late game Sea King sweep was uh, not really, I didn't think it was going to be in the cards. But, you know, it happened. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was definitely a strange battle. I just kind of wanted to upload it because I thought it was funny. But uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed. I don't know. Leave a like on the video if you did. And uh, I will have some more Wi-Fi battles up soon. Peace out.